Hey, this is Jake Hofer with Exodus Trail Cameras. In this video, we're gonna be covering how to get the most out of your trail camera data by utilizing this organization uh, method to increase your strategy with trail cameras. So over the last four years, the number of cameras that I personally used has increased drastically, um, but the need to organize all the photos and videos has remained just as important, if not even more, with the more cameras you run, because the more things I forget. So with a fleet of approximately 40 trail cameras uh, throughout all the place, the need to store information is crucial for developing a strategy and keeping track of core and non-core bucks and what the heck's going on in these farms and, and pieces of ground over the year. So year after year, we have seen many behaviors of specific bucks mimic the prior year's history, which can provide a legitimate chance of tagging a deer that maybe really only spends two to three days on your farm, um, which can be a very powerful strategy. It can help keep track of activity of does on scrapes and what the heck's going on there. And also it is great for going back and seeing what bucks looked like the previous year. So oftentimes a deer shows up in October and you, wow, that's a really big deer. I don't know who that deer is. And then oftentimes you go back and look at all those card poles. You can usually find who that deer is based on my experience. So it's a really powerful method to get the most out of the card poles that you're doing. You're already running the cameras. You're already doing all the work. But one thing that many people might be overlooking is a strategy of organizing it. And uh, I'm going to be sharing my method to the madness. It's not perfect. It's not the best but it is a great place to start and it hasn't failed me yet. So let's go ahead and get into it. In terms of the world, a lot can happen in a year, but in the whitetail woods, so much stays the same from year after year, depending on what's going on around that particular parcel. So that is why we have found it to be crucial to have a strong strategy of really keeping all these card poles, bucks, and seeing what's going on and using it for a strategy for years to come. So this is, how I would organize my trail camera data. Some things that you'll need is a computer is gonna go a long ways. Uh, it could be a laptop, it could be a computer. Doesn't really matter what brand as long as it has some sort of storage on there would be good. Or you could get an external hard drive if you bump around from camera to, or from computer to computer. So that's what we're looking at here today is an external hard drive. And this is just an example of how I would structure these files. A lot of times, or I guess on my computer right now, they have the names of the farm. And so we're just going to use examples for this here today. So we have the multiple year strategy right here. We have 2018, 2019, 2020. So let's go ahead and dive right into 2020 in farm one. So farm one will be the example of how we would do this from start to finish. So we have for 2020 farm one, we would have the bucks on the farm. So this would be target one, target two, target three all the pictures you have of that deer throughout the many years. And so that would be a really good way to see what those annual patterns look like and just really help you key on, on any sort of things that might be beneficial to, to getting that deer killed down the road. Um, depending off it's on video or photo, there's a lot of things that you can go back a year previous and see how was he interacting with different deer and it just gets you back right into that moment where you pull that card and so many other memories come back on what could be a strategy to get the deer on the ground for the following year. So target one, we have the multiple years. And then so another strategy here is naming the locations of where these cameras are at. One of my favorite things to do is putting a video, putting the camera on video mode on a community scrape. Community scrape being one that um, many deer used to communicate it's getting um, attention throughout the year and it's the it's the melting pot of of buck data um, from what i've seen over the years so this is a card poll from november of 2018 november 6th is when i looks like i checked this card or when i put it up there and so i had one here actually in october I hunted it, there was actually the buck that shows up right here was the one I was trying to kill. And as you can see, I was about three hours, three hours too early, I went and hunted a different uh, parcel. But here uh, is a wide buck that wanted to kill here, checks this scrape out. So this is 2018 and I remember like it was yesterday now that I'm going through this card. And so here he is again, headed on his way. 
Now this farm did not have a lot of sign. This was not a farm that was littered with scrapes everywhere, rubs everywhere. Really not a lot of sign in general, but that was the main community scrape that I could find with um, the majority of bucks and deer hitting that on a pretty frequent basis. There was assuming their bedding was just not too far from there based on the activity of them coming in and out of bed and hitting that scrape at times. And there, for an additional idea, behind this camera is one of the major ag fields that was a destination, destination food source. Here's another large deer that came in and hit that scrape in the middle of the night. And as we go through here, you'll see that he hit it a couple more times. And I don't recall if it was ever in daylight. It's been a long time since I went back and looked at this. Beauty of this is you can kind of see when a snowstorm came through and what did that activity look like? Did that help spark anything um, over the scrape? We're just going through all of this. There's that same buck from November 6th coming through here. And this area did not have a strong cover. So after a couple hard frosts and um, some snow, it just opened up this area quite a bit. And uh, there was still activity in there, but it definitely tapered off pretty quickly. That's the gist of that. That's the third buck that, you know, is over three that came in and hit that scrape during that time frame. So uh, this was definitely the key scrape in that area and uh, it was a really good place to go back and look and see everything. Unfortunately, I lost access to this farm, but um, it's a great example. So on this same farm, actually, I put a camera on a field edge. So this is kind of the theme here. So a lot of these major card poles where you want to keep track of everything are key food sources that get hit often community scrapes are where you want to if there was a place to save everything from a card pull that would be it so you can see here they're picking the crops and then let's just kind of jump down to let's go to november uh, when there might be some exciting things going on so november one let's click through here we got some turkeys Got a really good dew on the cover of the camera lens there. And there's a doe running at 533. A minute before is this buck chasing him around. So this is a key example of a buck that was coming through. Uh, this is where does would feed very often and was dogging a doe. So if I had access to this farm the next year, I'd probably be in there um, close to that time. So. It just helps you get a full picture and you can see if those does were feeding there every single night. What bucks, what was the key dates throughout that month of November? And it can just be a really powerful tool. So then a couple other examples is just having food plot, Northwest Corner, South Oak, you know, just naming some sort of, you know, point of interest that you have the camera at just so you know, basically. And then so just, you know, you can kind of see the same pattern and then if you have you know just name the different farms here so that is one way to do it and you can structure it however you think is best this is just an example to hopefully spark an idea that maybe you haven't used currently or maybe you haven't really stored your data up to this point now another really powerful tool is going through and this is for mainly apple computers and they have a program called iphoto so if you go and you put in a card and you can click what photos to save so i like to do that too on top of putting them in a, you know, a folder with a hard drive, you can actually just put some of these in here and then you can, it compiles all of your cameras based on the metadata, which is basically the information that's tied to that photo of when it was taken, what time. And so that puts it into this program and you can literally go through and this is, you know, this picture is from one county, this picture is from another county and you can just see what activity was going on the, the 17th across all farms. And that can be very powerful. Um, cell cameras basically do that for you now, um, just through the app. But for anyone running standard SD cards, this is one really powerful way of just seeing what was going on during that time of year. And um, it's just, you jump in a time machine and you can figure out what the heck's going on. So here's a uh, scrape week time frame, which was a very good time to be running cameras. That was 24th, 24th, and 24th, this is the deer I ended up killing November 3rd. Different farm, good ways away. 
24th was clearly a good date. 25th was obviously good too. So just a really powerful method um, for anyone that has that. Now, the thing with the two, with iPhoto, and you have, if you have an iPhone too, all these images will tie into your phone as well. So when you're on the run and on the fly, you can go through and look at all that too. So once again, this is a couple different strategies to organize all your trail camera photos to get the most out of them. There's a lot of people that have different spins on this. This is just ours. And I think it may help, you know, keep track of more bucks, figure out what's going on year after year. And, you know, maybe it's one more little piece of data that will help you kill a specific buck that you're after. So we hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And until next time, see you guys.